Good afternoon, everyone. I am going to present our ADL lens, anti dysphotopsia intraocular lens, a novel design to prevent negative dys dysphotopsia. It has been 2000 years since the first ever cataract surgery has been done. Since then, there has been a lot of evolution where we stand at trifocal lenses and high end FACO missions. But there is this one factor which prevents cataract surgery to reach its zenith that is, negative dysphotopsia perceived as a temporal crescentric shadow. Like here where we do the best for the patients, but the patient says, I can see everything, I don't feel any pain, but there is this temporal concentric shadow, but which is bothering me a lot, for which we don't have an answer. So why does this happen? Coming to the physiology, where here we can see two rays. One ray is passing between the optic and the iris, and the second way it is refracting at the optic edge. So this shadow is perceived as a temporal concentric shadow. So here we can see, uh, in normal crystalline lens, there is no space between iris and the crystalline lens. But here there is a lot of space, which is one of the reasons for the negative dysphotopsia. So to get rid of negative dysphotopsia, we have to get rid of the space. And we have to get rid of the uh, optic edge. Based on this concept, these are the other lenses available, which are very complicated to implant and they have own issues of uh, availability and uh, uh, implant uh, cost. So our idea was to develop a new IOL design, simple in its concept and easy to implant. As the lens is implanted, the optic by default should come at the uh, capsule rexis margin, thus eliminating the gap between the iris and the uh, optic and there should not be any uh, optic edge. So this was our uh, design. This was our radial lens where you can see a central optic surrounded by 360 degrees haptic which is angulated at 120 degrees. So this is a video of implantation where you can see it's, uh, it's just regular lens where a regular cartridge is used and just like any other intraocular lens it is loaded and here we can see the implantation being made up of 25% water content hydrophilic material. It opens up slowly. And all it takes is a simple nudge and it goes into the capsular bag and it comes with two dialing holes through which we can aspirate the visco behind the intraocular lens. As you can see, it just takes a simple nudge and it recenters into the capsular bag automatically. So this is the post-op pictures where we can see a small uh, reflex highlighting the fact that there is no gap between the iris and the intraocular lens. And here we can see a 360 degrees uh, uh, depression, which is nothing but the optic haptic junction. Uh, first question. No, no, sir, it's not done yet. It's not done. It's an interesting one. Uh, this is uh, some other pictures. This is the OCT picture where we can see this is the optic and this is the iris. There is no gap between iris and the optic. Yo. And this is the dilated pupil where we can see the optic continues as a haptic. There is no optic haptic junction and there is no edge. And this is another uh, picture where in a dilated pupil there is no angle closure or anything. We can see the lens here. And this is a beautiful <coughs> image where we took this shimflug image. This is the optic of the lens. And we can see the posterior capsule is stretched out just like crystalline lens where the picture is very much similar to this. Uh, we performed a study where we selected 56 patients who, who experienced uh, negative dysphotopsia in one eye and we implanted this lens in another eye and none of the patients uh, complained of any negative dysphotopsia. So to conclude, this new eye design is simple and easy to implant and till now we have been planning to replace the spectacles as intraocular lens design but uh, this is a new way we approached where we wanted to replace the crystalline lens thus eliminating the dysphotopsias. Thank you, sir. Okay, we we'll start with the questions. Yes, sir. Number one, PCO. Uh, uh, Sujata, uh, I've just started. PCO. Yeah, yeah, Varman, sir, go Number sir. one, PCO. Yes. What is the PCO rating? Number two, capsular distension can cause collection of fluid in the back and the, the whole fluid can become opalescent. Yes, sir. That's number two. Number three, how is this different from putting in a three-piece angulated lens upside down? Sir, the first thing, the PCO rate is very less, sir, because uh, as Japanese method of saying, like, if the anterior capsule and posterior capsule are kept separated, the chance of PCO is very less. 
In all these 56 patients, we had okay, only I'll one case. I agree that. Yeah. What about capsular distension with op opalescent fluid that's going to yeah. take that? To take care of that, we have put a, a large uh, hole. two uh, haptic holes, sir. So okay. but none that, of the cases has that, any... That hole is covered by the anterior capsule and that seals off. No, sir. It comes... It, a little bit of is open. When you plan for a 5.5 or 5 mm vexis, it comes as open. Um, Yes, yes, yes. I think what yeah. he said was uh, he had put it in the fellow eye of I patients see. who had uh, ND in the no, first no, eye. There are so many patients where only one eye who have negative dysphotopsia. Yeah. Basically, we want to make sure the person has experienced a negative dysphotopsia so that he can comment on the other eye whether he is having it or not. But you have not explanted it. No, 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 no. That would have been a better. What is the size of the central portion and the peripheral portion? Central is 6 mm optic, sir. Huh. And the peripheral mm -hmm. diameter comes around 11.5 mm. See, now the central portion is very close to the uh, capsular excess. Yes, yes. So that means the gap between the optic and the posterior capsule will be more. Yeah. So the chances of PCO will be more in these cases. Because the PCO has to be snugly touching the posterior part of the optic to mm -hmm. prevent any uh, migration of the epithelial cells. So theoretically, the PCO rate will be much more in these kind of lenses. Yes, sir. By going by that concept, PCO rate should be more, but PCO will be more. So we are preventing negative dysphotopsia, which is very rare, and the chances of PCO will be much more, which is more common. Actually, PCO is very less in our case series, sir, because How do anterior you capsule that? and posterior capsule they are not touching each other. So no. the transfer of anterior epithelial cells to posterior is also very less. It will be migration of the equatorial epithelial cells to the posterior capsule. So that will be much more because the gap is more. And as Dr. Arul mm. said. The capsular distension syndrome will be much more theoretical in these cases. Yeah, theoretically, yes. But because uh, the optic is very close to the capsular excess and it is closing that capsular opening. Yeah. And you showed in UBM picture that there is a capsule, uh, is the yeah. capsular bag is very nicely Very distended. much distended, yes. So, yes. what is the thickness of the lens? This thickness, sir. In the thickness of the lens. Uh, lens. It's uh, 1.56, sir. Thickness is 1.56. So, thickness From is same. Optic. Thickness is same. So, how do you explain the. Distension of the yeah. capsule because the thickness ah. of the normal lens is also one uh, around 1.5 compared to the crystalline lens, which, which is the early post op or, or, or it is a late post op picture. Both, sir, we have both. And uh, no. see, no. basically, the no. haptics no. they land right behind the equator, sir. So it will have the stretch effect. Once it push, pushes the uh, posterior capsule, the posterior capsule will uh, obtain its own original contour. That is the actual concept, sir. The haptics does not go and sit in the equator. They land, land almost uh, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 mm behind the equator. So it will nicely stretch us open the posterior capsule. Uh, and what is the refractive index of these lenses? Because this one, one, is, of, one of yeah. the theoretical explanation for negative dysphotopsia is higher refractive index of uh, acrylic hydrophobic material. That is about 1.48, 1.5. What is the refractive index of these? Uh, this is hydrophilic material only, sir. So refractive index will be less. Yes, yes. It's a regular hydrophilic, but uh, more with more water content. So it's more friendly with the capsular bag. Uh, As it opens, the capsule will hold it. Dr. Venteprabhu, superb Venteprabhu, you had a beautiful concept yeah. and you made the lens, you put them in the human eyes and you showed us the result also. Fantastic. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. I, I have a question I, I, here. I have one last question before we finish. Yes, sir. Were all the lenses in oh. touch with the pupil margin? Yes, yes, sir. They do touch. All 57 lenses in touch with the pupil margin. Yeah, they do touch, but uh, there is no pigment dispersion or anything. So that's why you chose the uh, hydrophilic. Won't it be simpler to put a secondary piggyback eye oil in a symptomatic patient rather than uh, put it as a, as, a, as a prophylactic? Sir, uh, our idea surgery. was to eliminate this problem, sir, completely. We just want to move ahead of this negative dysphotopsy. Thanks, doctor. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I yeah. have one, a question. Yeah, one I last uh, question yeah, from Mukesh, sir. I have a question here. Yes. Have you taken approval from your institutional ethics committee or uh, because there will be too many things in this kind of IOL. Mm. You will be tenting up iris. Your IOL is not going up to the equator. There will be long-term issues about glaucoma in these cases along with the other uh, issues. Mm. 
uh, and also the problem of negative dysphotopsia is there in initial one year only. Beyond that, I, uh, I think it's hardly so there. So patients get used to it, sir. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> it is, but yeah. you don't get patients of negative dysphotopsia yeah. after one year. So to counter a problem which is temporary, we are doing something permanent in the eye which is not approved and which can have uh, severe implications. So I think... Uh, no, the process was uh, proper, sir. We took the ethical committee and everything. We made okay. sure there are no... None of the patients had any complications. No flare, no cells.